rise and shine, my mothers and my brothers, rise and shine. Got up late today. I got up at 6.30 Saturday morning, slightly pissed, and I gotta lose that before I get to work. I normally get up at 4.30, and I don't know why. You know why? Usually I get up at about between 4 and 4.30, have to hit the bathroom. I call it nature's alarm clock. I learned a long time ago, when I try to go back to bed, the sleep is not really quality sleep. So I just get up and get stuff done. I've been doing that for years. Probably, mm, almost 20 years now. Occasionally sleep in. Today, woke up at 6.30. Probably because I didn't drink as much liquid last night as I usually do at dinner time. And this is what happened. So I lost two hours already. Normally I get so much done. Now I feel like I'm kind of like in a hurry. I feel like I'm kind of in a rush. And the beautiful thing about being an early riser is that you get things done. I posted on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, will you please? At George Bruno. A lot of good stuff there, the usable, actionable stuff. Not just uh, pot shots and opinions and all that kind of stuff, but some actionable stuff. I posted the other day on Twitter, I was thinking about this, how you get up is just as important as when you get up. Everyone talks about early to bed and early to rise. I agree with that. It makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. But how do you get up? Excuse me a second, my green tea just fell on the floor. Hold on. There we go. I drink a liter of green tea every day. Sometimes I just do a soda stream and add green tea to it. Today it's just regular. I drink it right out of the soda stream bottle. I make, um, at the beginning of the week, I make a bunch of one liter bottles of green tea. Stick it in the fridge. So it's just kind of like grab and go. green tea fanatic here. How you get up is just as important as when you get up. For instance, I wake up naturally mm, between 4 and 4.30. And I usually wake up dreaming. I had a great dream last night, too. Sometimes the dreams are just pure data things, a mishmash of information. Other times, I don't want to say they're premonition-y, but there's times, you ever dream about somebody that you haven't seen in a while and then they show up? I had a dream about somebody last night. And I'm just going to wait and see if somehow I encounter them like in the next week or so. And I'm going to tell them that I had a dream about them. So this is going to be, it's going to be really interesting. Man, I am buzzing through Norristown, which I like to do every day. I hate Norristown. I used to say, Philadelphia is the asshole of the world, and Norristown is 12 miles up it. Just, even when I was working in a damn mall, I still had to drive through Norristown. I could actually drive around Norristown, take an extra 15 minutes to get to work, and it would still be worth it. I just, I can't stand seeing a, a city crumble. Like, and just go into disrepair. Oh, the snow is beginning. Son of a gun! They said it wasn't going to start until 10, man, and now it's snowing. I see the flurries out there. Saturday nights after work, I hit the gym, pump some iron, might get a massage, and then I'm probably going to have to do some snow shoveling tonight. The roommate is not going to shovel snow. I didn't get salt. Salt is sold out everywhere. And 
my piss poor planning does not constitute an emergency on Home Depot's part. So snooze you lose, right? How you get up is just as important as when you get up. Let me explain that. When I get up in the morning, it's quiet. My bedroom's on the second floor. I am a robe wearer, as many of you know. I put on a flannel robe. I like happen to like L.L. Bean. I like their traditional clothing. So, put on a robe, throw on the moccasins, or I have like these L.L. Bean, I forget what they call them. They're just like slip-on moccasin kind of things that I've had forever. I can go out in the snow with them and everything. It's not like something that you would wear out and about. It's just something you slip on really quick. So I put on the robe and that uh, and those shoes and then I work my way downstairs and I will make my coffee. And then I read something and then I write something and I just look at my goals for the day. And I do it in a quiet fashion. And the pets are just arousing at about that time I get up before the pets do. And then many times when I do an early morning video, you'll hear pets crunching their food in the background. If it's uh, if they if they happen to be awake and come into the kitchen while I am uh, preparing my coffee, then I'll feed them. I don't make them wait. And it's quiet. I check my email. I check comments, questions. Usually I get, just from this channel, about a hundred a day. Literally a hundred a day. And sometimes they require a three-word response. Other times they require a sentence or two. Other times a paragraph, depending. I don't give away my expertise anymore. I give nothing away. I direct people to the services that I provide, which is the best thing to do, which is what you should do. So I'm no longer an advice giver. A free advice giver, I should say. Was it in uh, Charlie Brown? Remember the doctor is in, you know, 25 cents, sitting behind a booth or something. Man, it is snowing already. A little bit. It's flurrying, but we're supposed to get one to three. That's what she said. Um, how you get up. So it's peaceful, it's quiet. I live near some busy highways. Many times I shoot my videos out in the backyard where there's like pine trees and so it looks like I'm out in the woods. I'm really not. If you listen close to those videos, you can hear like tractor trailers shifting and traffic and cars hitting rumble strips and speed bumps. That's why my goal is to live in a house that you can't see from the road just tired. And that's going to happen in the next year. I used to say hopefully in the next year, but now it, it is going to happen. If you keep adding the word hopefully, or one of these days, or we'll see, if you keep using that language, then guess what? Guess what I did? For decades, I was a we'll see, one of these days, oh, we'll, you know, making everything doubtful. Speak with purpose and with your goals in mind. Make that change. How you wake up. Quiet, goal-directed, fuel yourself, drink water first thing in the morning. Just jump starts. I used to drink lemon water and then I was watching a, watching a video on Joe Rogan's uh, podcast. Uh, if you can watch the podcast on YouTube where he was talking to that scientist woman. I forget what her name is. And was, they were talking about like time-restricted eating. Eating, you know, like only 12 hours a day or 8 hours a day or whatever. And starting your day with water. Not lemon water, not tea, but starting it with water. Because as soon as you have any nutritional anything going into your system, and you guys that are nutritionists and personal trainers, you, you know this stuff. I'm just learning all this. What you don't want to do is 
get the bodies. Uh, you don't want to. You don't want the body to start reacting to food first thing in the morning. So you've quote unquote fasted overnight. You drink water to help flush the kidneys, and it does something good for the liver. I, you know, if I tried to explain it, I would sound ignorant. Just find the broadcast. It's Joe Rogan. Uh, time restricted eating. So I do that in the morning. Take a shower, groom myself, get dressed. Sometimes I prepare my clothes the day before, other times I have an idea of what I'm going to wear. I'll iron something if I don't take stuff to the cleaners. This morning I ironed a shirt. And because I know it's going to snow, I'm wearing jeans and my Merle hiking boots and a Eddie Bauer fleece vest. And I got hat and gloves with me. So I look like I'm ready to uh, go hiking today. Then I get dressed, and while I'm doing that, I listen to an audiobook on something. Something. I learn something every day. Every day. So I've been listening to uh, Gorilla Mindset by Mike Cernovich, and I'm going through that multiple times, and I listen to that all morning, ironing, getting dressed, doing, you know, like quick grooming kind of thing. So I listen to about a chapter or two a day, get myself going. So it's not just about getting up at 4.30, it's what you do when you get up at 4.30. So here I am in a rush. I'm almost at work now. I'd say in another like mile and a half or two, I'm going to be at the salon. How you get up. Do you get up in a peaceful way or do you get up in a rushed way? This is totally impromptu and in reaction to me getting up two hours later. I got up at 6.30. Now I'm rushing around like a maniac. I love my... And you know what this will do? This will... This will reinforce my 4.30 even more. Tomorrow, Sunday morning, I will be up at 4.30. But you don't have to get up. I know I don't, that's the beauty of it. When you do something and you don't have to do it, you understand me? You don't have to get up at 4.30 on Sundays. I know, that's why I do it. And I get more work done before I go to work than most people do all day long. And then, I'm working hard at work. Well, don't you get tired? Yep, I sure do. I sure do. I take cat naps, like little power naps. I hate, I hate the word power nap, but that's probably a good, a good uh, way to describe it. Because if I feel like I'm running out of fuel mentally because of exhaustion, fatigue, and getting up at 4.30, literally a 20 minute nap, boom, and I'm right back for another four to six hours of solid productivity. Bottom line, it's not when you get up, or I should say it's not just when you get up, it's how you get up. Think about your system in the morning. It creates a trajectory. It aims you like a rocket in a certain direction. So for me, talking about it to you this morning kind of helped me clear my anxiety. I feel good now. I feel good. I was a little bit frustrated. Now I feel good. It's a warrior mindset. I'm ready to attack the day. It's proactive. It's not reactionary. And it's going to be a great day. And you are going to have a great day. Have fun today. Just a few thoughts for you. Take care.